I upgraded to the new iPhone 15 Pro and it ruined my life. I lost hundreds of dollars of Bitcoin. I permanently lost some apps and gigabytes of app data. And I nearly lost access to every one of my accounts across the internet. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you all the steps you have to take to make sure that when you trade in your iPhone for a new one, those same issues don't happen to you. So first of all, how did this happen? I pre-ordered an iPhone 15 Pro and I chose to trade in my iPhone 11 Pro Max to Apple. And during the pre-order, there was a step that gave you two different options. The first option was trade in the device in store when you pick up your new phone and you should never choose this option. The second option was mail your phone in with the trade-in kit, which is the option that you should always choose. I chose option one and my logic is if I'm going to the store anyway, I might as well trade in my old phone. I hate having to mail things and this is going to be a lot more convenient. I've basically never been more wrong in my entire life. And that's because the only foolproof way to transfer all of the data from your old phone onto a new phone requires having both phones at the same time. The key step happens on the transfer your data screen when you have both phones. The first option says download from iCloud, which is an option that you should never choose. And we'll talk more about why later. And then the second option that you should always be choosing is called transfer from iPhone. I thought that because I had backed up my old iPhone to iCloud and to my Mac, that all of my data would be safe. And of course I was wrong. So when I was at the Apple store and I was trading in my old iPhone 11 for this new iPhone 15, I had the Apple genius wipe my old iPhone, obviously, so that my data wouldn't just be out there on a phone that I didn't control. And then I left the store with my iPhone 15 that had yet been set up with any of the data that had been just recently destroyed from my iPhone 11. And without both my old phone and my new phone, I forfeited the ability to do this foolproof transfer. But I backed up all my data to my iCloud and to my Mac, so shouldn't I be safe? It turns out those backups saved some types of my data, but other types of data are never stored in either of those backups. So next, let's explore the three different types of data that can be stored on an iPhone and get an idea of how to back up each kind of data. The first kind of data that's stored in an iPhone is what I'm going to be calling iCloud backup data. Some examples of iCloud backup data are basically everything that Apple gives you out of the box. So photos, contacts, iMessage, and even certain apps will back up their app data to iCloud. And you can see the full list of data that's backed up to iCloud by going into your settings and looking for apps using iCloud. iCloud backup data is super easy to save. You just have to run an iCloud backup. And if you run any kind of backup to your Mac whatsoever, all of this data is going to be saved there as well. The next kind of data that's stored on your phone is obviously obviously apps that are not backed up to iCloud. Examples of what these kind of apps would be are a lot of different games and then certain e-readers and other data where you're not necessarily making a login to that account, but you are downloading data from the internet into the app. And you'll be able to see for yourself what kind of apps are not backed up to iCloud by doing that exact same step that we just did in the iCloud backup data example. And then comparing that list of apps that are backed up to iCloud to the list of apps that are on your phone. Any apps that are on your phone that aren't backed up to iCloud that you also don't log into are apps where you need to make sure that you're backing up the data correctly. So let's go through a couple examples so you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. My Chase Bank app is not backed up to iCloud, but because I have Chase Bank login information, I don't need to back up that data to iCloud. Instead, when I get a new phone, I can just re-download the Chase app and all of my information will still be there. However, if I download a game like Slay the Spire, where Slay the Spire's data is not backed up to iCloud, and there's also no login information for me to save that data somewhere in the cloud, then when I go to re-download Slay the Spire on a new phone, all of that game data is going to be gone. This happened to me with an e-reader app that I had been using for the last five or six years. I hadn't bought an iPhone in four years, and during that time, the e-reader app that I was using got taken down from the app store. And because I did a cloud-based backup, that app couldn't be re-downloaded. Every time it tried to re-download, it was reaching out to servers that no longer existed. And this is the case for why you should always transfer from an old iPhone in that example that we talked about earlier for the foolproof method of transferring one iPhone data to another iPhone. Those files can persist across devices if they're manually transferred, but they can't always persist across devices if we're trying to send them to the cloud and then re-download them from the cloud. This is likely a very niche edge case that not everyone is going to have to deal with, but you'll never know if an app that you use all the time has been removed from the app store until you go to try to re-download it on a new phone and then you can't. The final kind of data that's stored on an iPhone is something that I'm going to be calling cryptographic data. Cryptographic data is not only not backed up to iCloud, it's not backed up to most cloud instances. And that's because a lot of cryptographic data is really important and it's keeping you from being hacked. The first kind of cryptographic data that a lot of people are using is two-factor authentication codes. And there are broadly two big categories of two-factor authentication apps that you could be using. The first category is apps like Authy and Google Authenticator that allow you to share your two-factor authentication codes across multiple devices. And the other category of two-factor authentication codes is ones that don't let you do that, like RSA and OctaVerify. Google 
authenticator codes now live on your Google account and might be recoverable through an iCloud backup. But when I recovered directly from an iCloud backup, I had lost all 40 of my Authy verification codes. This is a massive pain. And if you did out the math very conservatively, this would cost you thousands of dollars of your time to go back and re-authenticate into 40 or 50 or 100 accounts, however many different accounts you have two-factor authentication codes for. On top of that, it could be costing you even more money if you're unable to log into critical banking services that you need over the short term. So if you're using Authy or Google Authenticator, go right now and set up your codes on a different device so that if you are going to trade in your phone or if your phone is lost or stolen, you still have access to all of those accounts because your two-factor authentication codes are on a different device. Otherwise, it could take you a very, very long time to individually reach out to all of those different institutions and set up different two-factor authentication codes on a brand new iPhone. Luckily, I was able to recover all of my Authy codes because they were saved in a backup that I had done to my Mac. However, RSA Authenticate and Okta Verify are not backed up to any service that I'm aware of. And so even when I restored the backup from my Mac, I had lost those codes. Luckily, I only had a very small number of codes across those accounts and they're mainly corporate codes. So it was very easy to just reach out to corporate and get new codes very quickly. However, if you're using Okta Verify or RSA for your personal accounts, I highly recommend switching to Authy or Google Authenticator. My understanding is that RSA and Okta Verify codes should transfer through the transfer from iPhone method that we talked about earlier in the video. But again, that tutorial relies on you both having the new phone and the old phone at the exact same time. And so the number one tip of this entire video, if you've gotten nothing else from this, is never give your phone to someone else before you've transferred all the data to a new phone. The second type of cryptographic data that more and more people are storing on their phones these days that we talk about here a lot on the channel is obviously Bitcoin and cryptocurrency hot wallets. If you have a hot Bitcoin wallet that doesn't back up to iCloud and you don't write down your keys, that Bitcoin is gone. So for best practices, even though it's not a good idea to store Bitcoin keys on the internet, I do recommend backing up any hot wallet seed phrase to iCloud or a password manager, unless you're going to be using wallets like Blue Wallet or Casa that are going to do this for you. Since the seed was generated by internet connected device, you're not losing much security by backing it up to a cloud service on your own. In my opinion, I'd be uncomfortable leaving more than like 500 or $1,000 on a hot wallet. So if you are going to try to store that much cryptocurrency, I recommend that you instead watch this video up here, or maybe it's up here, where we talk about what the best hardware wallets are for different people. If you guys want early access to these videos, go down in the description and subscribe to the blog. And if you want a full tutorial of the foolproof transfer that I talked about here in this video, I have another video linked down in the description that I found here on YouTube that does a really good job of explaining how to do this foolproof transfer. Check out this video over here to learn more about the best way to set up your two-factor authentication codes. And check out these videos over here to learn more about Bitcoin. I love you all. See you next week.